Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I get a lot of questions and, uh, from my followers about interview questions and answers for many different entry-level cybersecurity role. And in this one, I'm going to give you about 50 top interview questions with answers. I'm going to discuss every single question as we go along. Uh, for a SOC analyst, you probably will see similar questions even if you're applying for a similar entry-level role so please watch the video if you are preparing for your interview if you want to add any comments any other questions that should be included please let me know okay with that let's get started so the first question that i want to cover is what the three main goals of information security this one you should all know it is going to be our cia triad uh, that is your confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, understand what they do, the C and I and A, and where and how you would implement them with what are the technologies that you would use. For example, confidentiality, right? You, you are thinking about encryption. Integrity, you, you should be thinking about hashing. And availability, you're going to think about maybe load balancers proxies things like that okay now in a related concept here triple a may come up okay triple a stands for authentication then authorization and accounting okay so if you don't know those three concepts please Take a look at it your authentication is critical and just because you're authenticated to a system you should not be able to do whatever you want it should be controlled by authorization and every time you do something there should be a log and that is going to be covered by your accounting all right let's go to the next question what is the difference between a threat a vulnerability and a risk? that's a very common question so threat is a potential cause of an unwanted impact to a system or organization Vulnerability, I just remember this word, weakness. Vulnerability is a weakness that could be exploited by a threat. And risk is the potential for a threat to exploit the vulnerability. Okay, make sure that you know all three of them. The next question is, what is a firewall? The firewall is a network security device that monitors and filters incoming and outgoing network traffic. And you can configure that based on an organization's established security policies. Now, one thing I, recom I, I, I recommend that you remember that the firewall could be a network-based firewall. Okay? Or sometimes we call this perimeter firewall. Okay? That is going to be at the edge of your enterprise. And it can also be a host-based firewall. Okay? That is part of your operating system like if you go to windows you can search for firewall and windows will have its own windows firewall so you can control in two different places um, other questions around firewall i typically see the traditional firewall versus the next generation firewall uh, what's the main difference and you will see the traditional firewall they only cover packet inspection up to layer 4 and in the next generation firewall, you can inspect uh, deep packets and it can do up to layer 7 analysis. So do a little bit of research on that one as well. The next question, what is the purpose of an intrusion detection system? So intrusion detection system does not stop anything. So detect, so detective detection is the primary goal. So it's going to monitor network traffic for suspicious activity and alert the system or a network administrator okay so it's just so you have a baseline that you have already determined for for your organization whenever there's a deviation you have some alerts that is that is that will be in effect and you will get an email notification so you can investigate what's happening a related question might be what's the primary difference between i IPS, which is an intrusion prevention system, and the IDS. In a prevention system, you can actually block certain traffic. With the detection system implementation, it's not possible. 
Now another uh, quick quick tip that IPS and IDS it could be the same too. The same to maybe like for example Cisco ASA. You can configure that in a detective mode, and once you are ready, you can turn on the protective feature. Okay, the next question. Explain the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption. So this is also very important. Just make sure you know that in a symmetric encryption, we key we use only one key. So the one key is going to be used for encryption. And the same key is going to be used for the decryption compared to the asymmetric encryption we use two different keys the one key we're going to use for the encryption and the other key we're going to use for the decryption now some related question a lot of time uh, the interviewer would ask you okay https okay what is this a stands for right so http is runs on port 80 that is clear text not secure https it runs on port 443 it is secure we use tls and the question they would ask okay what kind of encryption are you using in http is it symmetric or asymmetric that is typically a trick question because we use both so you should answer in https we use both in both symmetric and asymmetric encryption together how do some research Okay, next question, what is multi-factor authentication? That's also very common. It's a very important security feature that is going to give you a lot of benefits securing your organization because identities are top target. Okay, so what is the answer? A security system that requires more than one method of authentication from independent categories of credentials to verify user's identity. Like, know about something you know something you have something you are like those are the different type of authentication that you can have and you have to have multiple different one to meet the multi-factor authentication criteria let's move to the next question what is a ddos attack uh, ddos that the first is stands for the distributed and that is very very difficult to fight against and it's an attack that is going to that's target your availability, right? So if you, we talked about the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So this particular attack is an attack on availability. It tries to take down a business. And it's coming from many, 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 many different sources. So a lot of time a botnet is used for this type of attacks. Okay, let's move to the next question. What are the common types of malware? So this is also a very common question and you should know the differences between let's say viruses and then worm, trojan, ransomware, spyware, adware and rootkit. Uh, for example, the main difference between a virus and a worm, worm can self-propagate over the network, virus cannot, right? A ransomware, you think about encryption, you encrypt, they will encrypt your, your system and your data is no longer accessible and they will ask for a ransom so if you don't know the details please do some research next question how do you stay updated with the latest cyber security threat so this is also a question related to the SOC analyst drawers so we expect you being in the cyber security professional you are following the latest cyber security news so you should be Googling, you should be going to professional forums, continuously learning through courses and certifications. The next question we have, what is a SQL injection? It's a very common vulnerability. It has long time, it has been part of the OWASP's top 10 vulnerability for web applications. And it's a type of attack that allows attackers to execute malicious SQL statements to control a web application, so database server. So if you can really exploit, you can log in without any username, you can take all the data out, you can delete data, you can insert data, you can do a lot of malicious things if you really want it. So make sure you understand what are the protections, like prepared statements. So it is not only good to understand what the problem is, it is also good that you, that you know the solutions how do you fix a problem the next question what is the principle of least privilege this is really a very 
good security concept where you don't want to give a user more permission than they really need okay so the concept that users and systems should only have the minimal level of access that's a great security concept and you should implement that whenever you can now it is more difficult to implement in the real world but from a security theoretical theoretical standpoint that should be your answer the next question what is the difference between a black box and a white box testing now black box testing you have given no knowledge of the internal working of an application so you are maybe you're hiring a third party who would come and do a pen testing but you told you have given them nothing okay so you are really trying to see if somebody a threat which is out somewhere outside of your organization what can they do what's your risk in a white box box testing on the other hand you have given the pain tester maybe some access to your internal system so here you are assuming that the bad guys has already breached their inside your organization and your goal is to understand okay if an employee's let's say, let's say laptop is compromised what else is exposed okay so black box the people who are doing this testing they have no knowledge of your network your internal working in a white box they do next question explain the concept of network segmentation so this is also a security concept so you should divide your network into smaller seg sub segments or subments it's gonna to isolate different sectors like the hr they should have a different uh, subnet if you have a guest network they should have a different subnet things like that it's just a security principle next word is a honeypot and this is honeypot is really what i like to think about is a, re a reverse social engineering where you are really trying to trick the bad guy uh, to come to you so that you can learn about their mechanisms what they're using their tactics techniques and procedures so you can better prepare yourself so these are really systems with some fake data or fake service that's just running there and that's you should not put them in a production environment let's go to the next question what are the stages of an incident response just remember this one for a SOC analyst role preparation identification containment eradication recovery and finally relation learn let's go to the next question what is social engineering this is also a really important today and uh, just know that there is no technical control for social engineering so what is it the psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information so really the bad guy is trying to trick you and the, the most common way they would do it they would send a phishing email okay so the employee training is all you can do more you do is better next one explain the term phishing so phishing is a technique used to trick individuals into providing sensitive information by pretending to be a trustworthy entity in electronic communication so that's email the next one what is a security policy now without security policy nobody can be secure if you are an organization you must have security policies they should highlight what's your goal what are you trying to do so security policy a set of rules and practices that specify how an organization manages protects and distributes sensitive information the next question what is a vpn and how does it work so vpn is also very important especially in a world today where a lot of people are working from home and they have to connect it to their company network and they will go over the internet but they definitely would like to have the connection secured so VPN provides this virtual tunnel where the connectivity between the home network to the company network is completely encrypted the next one what is a security breach so security breach is an incident that results in unauthorized access to data applications services networks or devices 
So next, go to the next one, what is a zero day vulnerability? That is also a very common question. So zero day vulnerability really means that we came to know about some vulnerability and the vendor has no patch for it just yet. Okay, so there is a gap between now, it's known, and you'll find a lot of time GitHub, they will have exploited some code available and it will be, you know, attacked actively and you, there's a gap because vendor has to do research they have to get the developers and write write some fix for it right so the entire time until the vulnerability discovered till the patch is released you can call that a zero day vulnerability the next question explain the concept of defense in depth that's also a very important security concept that as a security professional you should implement security in multiple layers for example just because you have very good authentication the username and password, all of that MFA, you should not ignore encryption, right? If you if you just have encryption and let's say your authentication, they're both good, you should still implement your network segmentation. Okay, so that's that's the idea. Like you implement security in multiple layers, such that even if one layer is breached, you have control in other layers to give you the protection that you need next question what is a security baseline so security baseline is really a set of security objectives that are derived from established standards and best practices now the question is where are you going to get it okay now there are organizations who would who would publish the security baselines okay, and just do a google on security baseline for let's say windows server 2022 and you come up with a whole bunch of setting and there are professional tools like qualis like niches that can go and look at your system and tell you whether you have a deviation from the recommended security baseline okay and then from there you can work on it and fix the problems if it's relevant to your organization Okay, going to the next question what is a port scanning so this is a common method that uh, everybody uses both the good guys and the bad guys uh, to identify open ports and services available on a network system okay and as a good guy you're looking for unused port that you should close and as a bad guy you're also doing the same but your goal is to exploit and get into your system using some of the ports that are still open all right, let's go to the next question. Uh, the next one is, what is a man in the middle attack? So this is a, one of the very uh, common questions that I see. And the answer is an attack where the attacker secretly intercepts and relays messages between two parties who believes they are communicating directly with each other. So really it's somebody sitting at the middle and looking at all the traffic that is going from one end to the other end and right here uh, if you are using protocols that are not secure like http ftp things like that which uh, runs on a clear text like even telnet then the guy who is doing the man in the middle attack will be able to look at your password your sensitive information download documents all of that stuff so let's go to the next question uh, what is the role of encryption in data protection? Now, encryption is critical, especially in security, and they can go back to your CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Encryption solves the confidentiality pillar of our CIA triad. What is a botnet? Uh, botnet you will see a lot in the news typically they will have a command and control center or sometimes we call the bot head it is really a network of infected computers that are controlled by malicious actor and they are typically used to perform the ddos attacks or they can use to send mass email phishing email spread malware and if you go to the dark web probably you will be able to find that there are lots of botnet there for sale. The next question, how would you secure a wireless network? 
Now, pretty much securing any network, you would be using something like a encryption. And for wireless, you can use WPA3. You should change the default password. Uh, you should disable the older protocol like WPS. And you should be regularly updating the firmware as well. The next question, what is the difference between IPS and IDS? This one we discussed earlier as well. IPS and IDS doesn't mean that they have to be two different hardware or software based uh, software based solution. It could be a single device. Uh, if you can turn it on as an IDS or IPS, IDS is going to detect and IPS is able to protect. So implementation wise ips is typically inline so it can block your traffic ideas could be a parallel implementation so you are not in line with the traffic you're just inspecting the traffic from the side the next question what is a digital certificate now this one also part of cryptography and your answer could be an electronic document that uses a digital signature to bind a public key with an identity such as a per person or organization now in this uh, please make sure to review your pk public key infrastructure and what are the problems if you have uh, if you're managing your own certificates how they can be trusted or not trusted when you're using your own certificate versus using a public certificate the next question, what is a security operation center, which is a SOC, and if you're getting a SOC analyst role, you should know that this is a centralized unit that deals with security issues on an organization and technical level, typically responsible for monitoring and analyzing an organization's security posture. So typically, a lot of time you would think that they will have a dedicated room, they will have large dashboards where you will see real-time attacks what's going on out in the world you get threat intel feed and you have lots of analysts that are working hopefully 24 by 7 to look at major attacks and uh, reviewing if your organizations have an impact and taking necessary actions to mitigate the threat <laughs> But the next question, what are the key elements of a security audit? So this is also very important. Just logging and having that data is not enough. If you don't audit, if you don't take any action on the data that you're collecting, then it's useless. So what are the key elements? Planning, testing, and evaluating controls, examining compliance with policies, and reporting findings and recommendations. Now, security audit could be internal. It could also be done by a third-party vendor, Sometimes there will be regulations like ISO 27001, GDPR, NIST 853 that you have very specific questions to ask and answer and make sure that you have all the controls that are in place. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, what is two-factor authentication? This one we also talked briefly uh, when we talked about MFA. So two-factor two authentication is again a security process in which user provides two different authentication factors, like something you have, like a cell phone, something you know, like a password, something you are, like biometrics. One of them, or two of them has to be there. What are the common security protocols? So this one you should tell, okay, we are using maybe VPN, SSL, TLS, we're using SSH, we're using IPsec, that's for the VPN, LT2P and IPsec, they are used together. And for web traffic, we use HTTPS. Even FTP, you can say we use FTPS or SFTP. Both are valid, two different protocols. The next question, how do you handle a security incident? Now, what you need to do, you need to follow the incident response process. I hope that your company will have an incident response plan. You identify content, eradicate, recover, and review. The next question is, what is a security token? Now, that can be answered in many different ways. So, in this scenario, you're saying the token a physical or digital device that provides an additional layer of authentication by generating a unique code like this is really talking about 
MFA and you have a authenticator app, uh, app with your phone and it, you get a security code. The next one, what is the role of a security analyst in an organization? So security analyst role is very important uh, and they are there to protect an organization's information and systems by identifying vulnerabilities, monitoring for breaches and implementing security measures. Question number 38, what is a cross-site scripting? So here I would recommend that you actually look up uh, OWASP top 10. OWASP top 10 and look at all of the uh, vulnerabilities. So this one uh, you definitely going to find within the OWASP top 10 for the web vulnerabilities. So this is a vulnerability that allows attacker to inject malicious scripts into web pages so you'll be able to run uh, script uh, install malware uh, get cookies and uh, if you're interested do uh, google on the myspace hack and it was one of the largest hack in the world that misused one of the cross-site scripting and 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 learn about the amazing story how it really saved the industry and a lot of people, they got really worried about the application security. So it's again, MySpace hack. You want to do a Google search on that. What is a sandbox in cybersecurity? So sandbox is typically an isolated environment used to execute suspicious code without risking harm to the whole systems on network. So in my environment, let's say I have a virtual box. Within the virtual box environment, I can create my own infrastructure, everything is contained within its own network nothing is going out to the internet i can do whatever i want within within that environment which is completely secure isolated and we we'll call that a sandbox environment next one how do you protect against ransomware so this is also important because ransomware is everywhere these days uh, mgm grand attack that happened uh, end of december uh, end of 2023 uh, it was a huge news if you don't remember please do a google search on m uh, uh, the hack that happened to, to las vegas m and mgm mgm grand hack okay so some of the control you can take uh, regularly back up your data keep your software up to date patch management you use antivirus have end user training and uh, employ advanced threat detection system use same and perform auditing the next question what is the patch management that's what we just talked about the process of managing software update and patches to fix vulnerabilities and improve performance so patch management seems easy but it is actually a very difficult process and uh, typically patch management we relate back to the operating system only if you're using Windows, you may be able to turn on the automatic updates. Same thing for the Mac or uh, Linux. You can configure automatic updates. But you would got to think about other tools and plugins and softwares that you install on top of the operating system. Like maybe using VirtualBox, Python, Apache, anything that you can think about and any applications that are running on top of an operating system. How do you patch them? So for now you just know that patch management is the process so everything is being patched okay how you do that is actually more complex than you think okay the next one what are some of the common encryption algorithm so here i would recommend go beyond what i have an answer here so and and know some of the common symmetric and asymmetric algorithms as well like aes okay that symmetric and uh, before AES, there used to be DES, okay. Uh, DES actually we refer here, so let's put it back. Uh, RSA, this is gonna be uh, asymmetric one, okay. So learn about the common uh, encryption algorithm and, and definitely know which one is still a standard. Like DES is no longer in use and not recommended. You should be using AES at this time. The next question, what is a security incident? Any event that compromises the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of an information asset, we call that an incident. So event could be many. 
not every event is an incident but every incident is an event now this is the next question what is the role of uh, of an antivirus software so this one you should know to detect prevent and remove malware from computer system and today if you're just using a uh, signature based antivirus you're probably not doing justice to yourself it should be using behavior based anomaly based detection as well look at windows defender and you will know what i'm talking about the next question what is a data leakage that is also critical in today's environment and a lot of advanced persistent threat groups they're targeting data that is owned by different organizations once they have the data uh, their sensitive information, confidential information, customer data, their details, SSN, they can shell all the data back to the market. And data leakage means that somehow somebody got access to your data and it is being exfiltrated to some external party without your knowledge. The next question, what is the certificate authority? I've already mentioned you should look at the PKI, public key infrastructure, and this is part of it. So certificate authority is an entity that issues digital certificates and validates the identity of the certificate holder. The next question, what are security best practices for managing passwords? So that might be a question you might get. So common sense, use strong, unique passwords, change them regularly, do not share, do not use the same password to go to every single website that you have an account with, like the, the the, the password that you're using for LinkedIn, do not use it for Facebook. The, the password that you have for Facebook, do not use it for your bank, right? Things like that. So for every single one, you should have their own password. That's the best guess, best practice. The next one, what is the role of a penetration tester? Here, penetration tester will come and they're gonna simulate attacks on systems to identify vulnerabilities and provide recommendations for providing security a lot of time painters really you need proof so they would actually exploit some of the vulnerabilities that they will identify and show a proof of concept that this is what you have and this is how i have penetrated to your system and that's the risk the next question what is a data encryption at rest and in transit so this one you should also know so data encryption you should implement at rest that means you have stored the data like you have stored your pictures in a drive okay so you gotta protect the drive you have to encrypt the drive maybe you're using BitLocker for a full drive encryption so that is going to be an example of of encryption at rest Encryption in transit means now you, you're sending the data from one endpoint to the another, it is going over the internet. So like you'll be using HTTPS. So when the data is in motion, the encryption that you're adding, that is gonna be encryption in transit. And when you are storing the data, it will be called encryption at rest. The next question, what is a breach notification? So this has become regulation for many of the breaches as per many regulated industries. So here the process of informing affected individuals and regulatory bodies when a data breach has occurred as required by law or policy. So if you are working for a company, make sure that you know what laws and regulations they have to follow. And your laws and regulations could be state specific, country specific. So make sure that you know your local laws and the time that you have to report a breach. Okay, I'm gonna give you some bonus questions. We already go for 50 questions, a few more. Uh, what kind of encryption is used in HTTPS? So this one I probably already mentioned, this is actually a trick question. In encryption that we use with HTTPS, that ACE is for TLS, we actually use both symmetric and asymmetric. So the asymmetric encryption used to exchange the key and when you are transmitting data, you'll be using a symmetric encryption. So please do a Google if you want to know more about this particular topic. It's a long one, so I'm gonna cover that in another video. The next question, what is the minimum version of TLS that is still safe to use? So the HTTPS and the ACE originally, it, stands, it, it stood for SSL, right? it's a secure shocker layer. None of the SSL versions are secure at this time. 
and you should be only using TLS which is called the transport layer security. Transport layer security version 1 and version 1.1 both of them are now broken you should not use them. The minimum version that still valid as of June of 2024 is 1.2 although version 1.3 is already out and I recommend that you start using them as soon as you can. The next one, what is a deny by default? So this is again a question that I see a lot in interviews. Uh, this is typically used in firewalls where uh, you create a rule where you say, okay, deny everything by default only and then you allow right start writing rules when you need a particular connection. Okay, so if there is no rule, nothing is allowed. So that is called a deny by default. Now, this is a sample question that I have for the, what is a port number for RDP. So if you are for an entry level job, basic requirement is you know that most commonly used ports. So I've given you only one example of RDP and it's 3389. And also know that the port is running on TCP or UDP. So this one in this case is running on TCP. But I can ask you, okay, what's the port for FTP? 21. What's the port for DNS? 53, right? So make sure that you know most of your common ports that there might be 15, 20 that you have to memorize for the interview for sure. Okay, so the very last question that I want to cover in this presentation is what is the difference between hashing, encoding and encryption? And I told you encryption is something that is very important in security. You are gonna come back and see this many, many times. So if you start with uh, encoding, Believe me or not, encoding does not solve any of the C, I, or A problem for us. Okay, it does not so solve confidentiality, integrity, or availability. So encoding is something that we use when we are transmitting information over the wire, and it's just a formatting of your data that is easier to transmit over the network. So let's say you're using base64 encoding your data to you it would look weird but when we get to the other end the other end will say okay i got the data and it has used base 64 so they will easily be able to decode so the thing is there is no key no key is involved in encoding that's the major difference between the encoding and encryption in encryption you have a key that is used at least one key for symmetry two keys for the asymmetric so what makes encryption so secure or confidential is the confidentiality of the key because you can tell everybody okay I'm using AES but just don't tell them what the key that you have used okay so encoding we talked about encryption we talked about so hashing so hashing is a one-way function and it is used for integrity so that one again does not solve any confidentiality or availability it is solving your integrity problems again if you have any questions please do some more research on them and uh, if you feel like we need to cover more just you know write it down in the comments i'll create a separate video and we'll talk about these concepts in greater detail uh, with that i think we have covered most uh, generic questions for a SOC analyst role that i can think of again if you think of any please add it to the comments uh, if you like the video please subscribe share it with your friends who are maybe interviewing for similar roles and good luck thank you